A1 Pictures has had so many great anime come out over the years, and today I want to talk about one particular series that was so extraordinarily beautiful, as well as thought out, not to mention emotionally damaging. Imagine on a lonely summer day you're just sitting inside playing your video games like almost all of us would be. You can't help but shake the feeling of annoyance from your girl best friend pestering you, curious to know what it is that you're doing exactly. It reminds you of almost every modern romantic comedy or friendly otome game, right? Well, there is one small difference that being Minma, our main character's childhood friend that has been dead for five years now. And this, everyone, is the story of Anohana, the flower we saw that day. Genta seems like your everyday teenager with a lack of social skills, and in the five years of Minma being gone, the former group of friends that they held so dear have slowly but surely started going their separate ways. Every single one of them have been permanently damaged by the loss of their best friend, without having the heart to talk about it to one another. And I don't know about all of you guys, but this story hits me somewhere I thought I buried in the back of my own. But all five of these friends, drifting apart, is somewhat of an issue. You see, for the beginning of the story, Jinta is the only one capable of actually seeing Minma, and in order for her wish to be granted, all five of them must grant this wish together. At the same time, Jinta tries making himself believe that she is just a stress-induced hallucination caused by the self-loathed guilt that he feels. I know I try to crack jokes in most of my videos to make you guys laugh with me, but this particular video is a little more serious and hits me harder than I would like to admit. But regardless of thinking she is just in his imagination, at first, he just can't simply say no to her. And that, my friends, is just the beginning of the show. If you haven't seen the show, then you might not get what I'm about to say. But if you have, I just want you to think about this one thing. And that specific thing is the ending song. <laughs> As you know, to anyone who hasn't witnessed True Heartbreak, this song may just as well be another Japanese pop song at the end of a slice of life anime that doesn't really have any real meaning to it. On the other hand, if you have witnessed True Despair and Loneliness, you know as well as I do that this isn't necessarily a song. It is, in fact, an emotional machine gun that won't stop shooting you in the heart until you're left crying on your bed with no sense of who you really are anymore. Are you yourself? Are you now Jinta and the gang? The correct answer is we are all now part of this mass plan to visit Minma and the others in the Saitama Prefecture in Japan in a small place known as Chichibu, where you can find almost all of the scenery that Anohana was based off of. Which brings me to my next point. I find it absolutely fascinating when anime can take real life places and implement it into the specific show. Sure, you can go to another world for a short span of 12 episodes, but doesn't it feel better? if you could actually go to the area your favorite show is based off of. Now don't get me wrong, I know the anime is absolutely nothing like real life in Japan, it's not the same place as you see in anime most of the time. That being said, I do still plan on moving to Japan eventually whenever I get the chance, because I still love the culture and atmosphere there as well. However, it would also be amazing to see where those scenes in some of my favorite shows were shot, for the simple fact that almost every scene that is based off of a real place in anime is just as gorgeous, is just as gorgeous and sometimes desolate as it was in the actual show. Now if you're wondering if you should watch on Ohana if you haven't already, the answer is absolutely. Even if you're not a fan of the slice of life genre, I can promise you that you will love it. Also, when and if you do decide to watch it, I want you to come back to this specific video and tell me how that song makes you feel now rather than it did before you seen the show. And if you have already watched this absolute tearjerker, let me know how it made you feel in the comments section. Anohana has shown me and reminded me of something that I used to do as a child, and that specific thing is crying just to let all of the pent up emotions out. This show has a way of sending the message out to let you know that it's still okay as an adult to let out your emotions at times. As long as I can remember, I've never really been one to get too emotional. With that being said, after the first time I watched Anohana, it reminded me that sometimes it is better to feel all of these emotions rather than feeling nothing at all. I can promise you that if I were to go back and rewatch the flower we saw that day, I would still cry like a bitch regardless of knowing what's gonna happen. And yes, it does have that much of an impact for anyone that has seen it. If you didn't cry like a disappointed Emoto when you saw it, you should probably see a doctor because I don't think you physically have a heart. Now I don't want you all thinking that I'm recommending Anohana simply because it holds deep sentimental value to me, because other than breaking your heart, it is also one of the best anime in a critical point of view that I have seen for a while, despite having rewatched numerous times. 
For instance, Mariokita, who was a screenwriter for the show, based it off of her own personal experiences, more or less portraying herself as a truant character, which is our main character, Genta, when she was still back in high school. And not only did she bring a deep impact with the story alone to Japan, but also spreading these same feelings across the world. Anohana is not just perfect with Okada's story alone, however. This anime wouldn't be half of what it is if it wasn't for the sound designer Jin Akatagawa, character designer Masayoshi Tanaka, and the director Tatsuyuki Nagai. You put all of these brilliant people together and you're left with a show that now has left a permanent imprint on your heart and soul. This show, however, is just not about Genta. Altogether, we have six different protagonists all showing us different stories while having one thing in common. They all miss Minma, and every one of them feels some kind of guilt for what happened. Let's start with Genta being the one we see the most of. From here on, this is going to be going into a little bit of a spoiler territory, so if you would like to pause this video and go watch it, you can find it on Netflix being the only place I know of where you can stream it in HD with the dub. It is only 11 episodes long, so it's only a quick binge away. Jin was the most confident out of the bunch called the Super Peace Busters. Keep in mind when I said was. After losing Minma and his mother shortly after, he went from concealing his feelings behind a mask to being a full-blown hermit. He not only more or less refuses to leave his house, but he drops out of school at first, only leaving to get the necessities to survive. When Jintan first attempts to get the rest of the Super Peace Busters back together, everyone looks at him like he's lost his mind and is being heartless towards the rest of the group. All except our next character being Hisakawa, also known as Popo. Popo was the goofball out of the group, also being the first one that Genta connected with after the group broke up. Popo as a child was extremely energetic and all four recognizing Genta as the leader of the group. After reconnecting with him again, we see that not a lot has changed, other than the fact that he works a part-time job only so he can travel across the world, while sleeping in the old secret base when he's back in Japan. We see that Genta explains to him that Minma is back and the six of them need to grant her wish together, and of course, Popo is with this 100%, no questions asked. The next one on the list is Anjo, and while she may seem cold and bitter towards Genta, she is just secretly concerned for him. While they have grown apart, Anjo seems to be the closest to Genta, seeing as they both go to the same high school, even though Genta no longer attends. On the outside for the beginning, she just seems cold and heartless, but as the story progresses, she learns to open up again, and becomes rather sweet and caring, even though she never really stopped worrying about everyone else. There are three other main protagonists in this story, but if I continue talking about it, I feel like you may not want to watch it, if you haven't already seen it, that is. That and this video would probably be an hour long. So if you haven't been able to tell, Anohana means so much to me, and it has taught me very, very important life lessons, despite it only being 11 episodes long. If you enjoy this type of content, then don't be shy to subscribe, as I welcome you with open arms. I'm Broken Obsessed in my otaku ways, and I will see you all next time.